A good day for Buffalo, but it seemed like it took a long time to get any scoring at all in that game. Yeah, it was uh, over 30 minutes, as a matter of fact. And David Treadwell, who is Denver's kicker, knows how Scott Norwood felt last year, and he doesn't feel very good. Last year, Scott Norwood missed a field goal that would have given the Bills their first Super Bowl championship. Today, Norwood made the kick that gives Buffalo another trip to the Super Bowl. Let's go to Rich Stadium up in Orchard Park, New York. The Bills and the Denver Broncos in the AFC Championship game. Buffalo coach Marv Levy is pumped. So is the Bills defense. Cornelius Bennett swallows up Gaston Green. Green again, eaten up this time by Leon Seals. The Broncos defense equally stifling. Ron Holmes bats Jim Kelly's pass into the air. Greg Cragen gets the interception. David Treadwell, 47-yard field goal. It's long enough. Is it good? No. Wide left, says Bennett. Treadwell from 42 yards. It's going right. Did that ball hit the upright and bounce out? It sure did, says Bruce Smith. Treadwell from 37 yards. Did that one hit the right upright too? I don't think we want to hear what Denver coach Dan Reeves said. Would anyone score in this game? Not in the first half. It was zip, zip at intermission. It figured the defense would put the first points on the board. Third quarter, Jeff Wright knocks John Elway's pass to Carlton Bailey. Seven zip bills. Fourth quarter now, Scott Norwood hits a 44-yard field goal. You know, that ended up being the difference. Elway left with a bruised thigh. His backup, Gary Kubiak, who announced his retirement last week, scores with under two minutes to play. Denver trails 10 to seven. Broncos go for the onside kick. It works. Steve Atwater recovers for Denver. The Broncos with one last chance. Kubiak hits Steve Sewell, but Sewell fumbles. Buffalo recovers and the Bills go to the Super Bowl 10 to seven. They wanted it just as bad as we did. I guess uh, the home field advantage took care of itself when we needed it. And I'll tell you what, when Carlton intercepted that one, the whole offense was saying, please get into the end zone. This is probably the, the best team that we played all year. Uh, we knew it was going to go down to the wire, but, but we knew we had to play 64 minutes, and uh, we'd come out on top one way or another. All right, uh, let's take a look at the other game, the NFC Championship, Washington hammering Detroit, so it looks like it will be the Redskins and the Bills in Super Bowl 26. If you didn't stay up until 1 o'clock in the morning to see it on ESPN, you missed Ohio State Scotty Graham playing a big role in last night's Japan Bowl. Graham's East team trailed the West 13 zip after three quarters. We pick it up in the fourth quarter. Graham, a fullback for the East, watched the nice pass blocking, which enables Tennessee quarterback Andy Kelly to step up into the pocket and hit Alabama Sir Ann Stacy. Stacy turns it into a 15 yard gain and a first down at the West 16. Graham with a good run blocking helped Stacy pick up seven more. And from the nine, Graham gets the call. He bulls into the end zone. The East is within six, 13 to seven. A lot of Big Ten players figuring in this game. Matt Rogers of Iowa. He's the West quarterback. He's picked off at midfield by Michigan linebacker Eric Anderson. The East back in business. Third and two, give it to who? Scotty Graham, of course. He picks up the first down. From the West 18, Scotty gets seven more yards and another first down. Graham says, I sincerely hope all the pro scouts here are taking notice. I'm sure they were. Less than three minutes to play. Alabama's Kevin Turner leaps tall lineman in a single bound. We are tied at 13. Carlos Huerta of Miami, who missed one extra point in all oh, about 140 attempts at Miami. You knew he wasn't going to miss that one. East over West, 14-13. College hoops today. The Lady Buckeyes hosting Wisconsin. Chris Gent on hand, signing some autographs before the Lady Bucks. I hope uh, he'll bring one back for Colleen. Second half. Elijah Bond feeds Erica Floyd for two, but the Lady Bucks trail Wisconsin by eight. Then Bond to Avril Roberts for the lay-in. Roberts will hit from three-point land, but Coach Nancy Darsh wouldn't like how this one turns out. Kim Martin will hit for the Badgers, and Wisconsin wins it 90-79. Last night in figure skating, Christy Yamaguchi won her first national championship after three straight second-place finishes. Nancy Kerrigan takes second, followed by Tanya Harding. Those three will represent the U.S., in next month's Winter Olympics. IndyCar driver and now IndyCar owner, Bobby Rahal of Dublin is preparing for the upcoming season with his new team, Rahal Hogan Racing. Rahal has spent the past few months doing owner type work, like getting the team's new Chevy powered car and find, signing a four year contract with sponsor Miller Beer. This week, Bobby turns to his other job as driver when the team goes to Texas and Phoenix to test the new car and get ready for the first race of the season, March 22nd in Australia. It's exciting. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's exciting. Handle it. And we'll be back in just a minute. Dad, do me show where the controller is. Pardon me? Do me show where the controller is. What? Yeah.
The singers call themselves the Columbus Collection, and they are part of the Sweet Adelines. And Doug, you may not be worth uh, a million bucks, but somebody thinks you're worth 20. Boy, thanks for embarrassing me twice, once in the newsroom <laughs> and once now. Our pleasure. That was awfully sweet. We get a lot out of the doing that. <laughs> and we'll abuse you two later. All right, let's go to uh, women's basketball, where Tracy Hall wrote herself into the Ohio State record book this weekend. Friday night, she became the Lady Buckeyes' all-time leading rebounder, and today she needed just four points to become the woman's all-time leading scorer. All right, 5,700 fans of all ages turned out to see Tracy break the record, and they didn't get disappointed today. Early in the game, Hall cans a short jumper, and she makes the steal to Nikki Lowry. Back to Hall for the record breaker, Tracy's 1,753rd point. That breaks a career mark set by Kim Jordan in 1980, who was on hand to present Tracy with the game ball. And Hall was just getting started. Tracy on the alley-oop from Lisa Klein. She finishes with 26 points and 10 rebounds. Nikki Lowry scores 27, two of them on the steal and the layup, and Ohio State rolls over Michigan 87 to 73. The Lady Bucks go to 17 and four on the season, nine and two in the Big Ten. All right, on the men's side today, AP top 10. Top-ranked Temple has no trouble with George Washington, Oregon over Arizona. They're early in the game, and it's North Carolina over Virginia. In the pros today, the top two teams in the NBA got together out in Los Angeles in a replay of last year's championship series and a preview of what will probably be this year's championship series. It was, of course, the Lakers against the Boston Celtics, and the Lakers win at 115 to 106. We'll have highlights at 11. The other game in the NBA this afternoon, the Nets over the Sixers by four. All righty, at the Winter Olympics in Alberta, Canada, the men's downhill skiing had to be postponed today because of 70-mile-an-hour winds at the top of Mount Allen. They'll try again tomorrow, and in the first round of the hockey competition, Canada beat Poland one to nothing. Well, it was a scary afternoon for stock car racing legend Richard Petty at the Daytona 500. On lap 106, Petty gets turned sideways by Phil Barkdahl. That sends him into a barrel roll. Petty flipped seven times, and then he gets rammed by Brett Bodine. Somehow, Petty got out of this with just a broken ankle. He was treated and released from the hospital a few hours ago, so a good ending to that uh, story. On to the finish where Bobby Allison holds off his son, Davey, to take the checkered flag. Allison becomes the first driver ever over the age of 50 to win a 500-mile race. Today, the final round of the Hawaiian Open out in Honolulu. You saw it right here on Channel 4. Lanny Watkins is going to hit the clutch birdie putt at 18 here. And that puts all the pressure on Richard Zokel, who led for the first two rounds. He's got to chip in to tie it close, but uh-uh. And Lanny Watkins wins the Hawaiian Open at 17 under par. All right, the play of the week in sports came in yesterday's Clintonville Boys Association Junior League game between the Bulls and the Buckeyes. We go to Centennial High School. Pick it up in the final seconds of the game. The Bulls with the ball, trailing 30 to 26. The Buckeyes come up with a steal here. But Nick Cook steals it back, and then watch what he does. He throws it up from midcourt at the buzzer. The Bulls still lost by one, 30 to 29. The 12-year-old Nick Cook, a sixth grader at Crestview Middle School, definitely had the play of the week. All right, and the name of the week has to be the running back from Roxbury, New Jersey, who signed a letter of intent to play at Ohio State this fall. His name is Tony Goodgame. And Ohio State uh, today beat Wisconsin in wrestling for the first time in 18 years, 21 to 14. And we lost last night in our charity game, 61 to 53, to the coaches of the Clintonville Boys right. Association. But we helped raise money for them. That's why we showed those highlights because they were better than, than yours. No, definitely. I'm definitely. <laughs> you're right. You're right. It's a heck of a shot. I got a question for you. Yes. What has two legs, feathers, and purrs like a kitten? It's Delaney Olson, of course, and you'll meet her when we come Delaney. back. <laughs>